In this module, we're going to work with overvoltage protection, which are surge arresters or lightning arresters, sometimes you're called. Uh, so we'll talk about terminology, MCOV, maximum continuous operating voltage, um, metal oxide varistor, MOV, BIL, the level that of basically a lightning strike or surge that equipment can handle, and class. So those are some of the terminologies. Uh, the basics of how they operate. And we'll also deal with a little bit on uh, sizing. So over current protection, which we've already dealt with, lots of ways to deal with that. Over voltage protection, pretty simple. Surge arresters and grounding and to some extent overhead static wires. So we ground for transient protection. We put in surge protect surge arresters for transient protections protection. Transient just means uh, short-lived, so these quick blips. Uh, what, why, are we, why are we doing this? Because over-voltage conditions will damage insulation. So we're trying to prevent insulation from getting damaged. If insulation gets damaged, then we wind up with a fault, right? We wind up with a short or a ground fault. So if we put in good over-voltage protection, we can get stuff to last longer. What causes overvoltage? Well, lots of things cause it. We tend to think of lightning, but there's other things that will cause it. Um, I've seen large transmission lines fall on small distribution lines, and suddenly a 20,000 volt line is energized at 138,000 volts. So that sort of thing. Okay, here in Wyoming, we do have a fairly high isochronic level. Uh, here's Florida, very high. West Coast very low. I don't know that you need to worry about that too much. But what's BIA? Well, BIL is basic impulse insulation level. And it's higher, the higher the insulation rating of the equipment, the higher the BIL will be. Sometimes you might, if you live, say, in Florida, you might hire, you might purchase equipment that has a higher BIL than standard. And essentially, you're just getting tougher, uh, better insulation. Um, so what surge arresters do is we try to reduce the voltage across the equipment to be below the BIL. So when a, when a surge comes, we're just trying to keep it uh, manageable so that the equipment isn't damaged. Now, wherever there's insulation, you're going to have arresters. So we see them a lot where lines go underground because then all that conductor is insulated. We see them near transformers. Right, lots of insulation. We see them near expensive motors, lots of insulation, generators, that sort of thing. So here's a little picture of the BILs, typical BILs, and we'll see those on nameplates. So if this is the system voltage, for instance, if you had a uh, 4160 transformer, you might expect a BIL of 60,000 volts. And you'll see it on nameplates. You can, it might be called something else like full wave impulse level here. Uh, what's this say? Full wave impulse test level. And you notice there's uh, different ratings for the different windings on these transformers. What do they look like in the substation? This is the, this is the, the surge arrestor. One, two, three here. And then there's one back here. And one back in there. One you can't see. And then there's some up here on the steel. steel. Ooh, that was easy for me to say. So a transformer has tons of insulation. It's a very important piece of equipment. It might be a half a million dollar unit. So we're trying to keep that insulation, protect it the best we can from over voltages. Notice that the bus work comes straight down into the arrestor. So it has a, a really good path. You'll see later that the way we connect these impacts the voltage that the protected device will see. So the better we connect it, the, the lower the voltage. So here's the, when you look on a surge arrestor, you'll see th these markings indicating the voltage, the class, the MCOV, and the application. So we might see a voltage of say, well, you know what, I'll show you a picture one and we'll, we'll do a real live one. So notice on this surge arrestor nameplate, it has a 6 kV RMS rating. That means somewhere around 6 kV, this thing's going to really turn on and do its business. It's become going to become a good short. But the MCOV, that's the maximum continuous operating voltage, and we should not apply more than 5.1 kV to this 
arrestor or it's going to start to conduct a little bit and over time that'll damage it. So maximum continuous operating voltage and the rating are different. And then notice it's got a station class. That's a beefy trans that's a beefy 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 unit. It's as good as you can get. So how do they work? What do they do? Well, normally they're an open circuit. These are solid state devices. They're metal oxide varistors. And so they turn on and discharge to ground when the voltage gets high enough. So it's a solid state switch. The switch is open when the voltage is low and when the voltage gets high it turns on and if you miss uh, if there's a place in there where they'll conduct a little bit if you misapply a, a metal oxide varistor unless in other words if you put a surge arrestor in that's a little too small and you have it turning on more frequently than it should um, that can be a problem but normally they sit there and they're open until the voltage gets high enough to uh, turn them on so here's some pictures of uh, some surge arresters. There's a little surge arrestor protecting a transformer. So if there's a surge, if the voltage gets high, this thing goes from being a high resistance metal oxide varistor. Think of it as variable resistor. It goes from being a high resistance to a low resistance. Current will flow down and and bypass the equipment. Here's one on the secondary surge arrestor on the secondary. This has this voltage, ooh, this current, uh, well, still produces a voltage across the equipment. So E equals IR, right? E equals IR. So if you have 10,000 amps flowing and you have one ohm of resistance in the leads and in the, and in the MOV, then you might have 10,000 volts that this unit subject it to for a moment, for just a moment. And so long as that's less than the BIL, you should be good to go. It shouldn't hurt anything. So that's the basic principle of how they work. Some more pictures. More pictures. Uh, in the mining, we have to put them in. Ungrounded wires, exposed power conductors. So we have to put them in in mining, but they're a good idea all over the place. Uh, we're not going to talk about silicon carbide. I think most of those are mostly gone in the world. But... Uh, this is what you're going to see most often in the modern world. In fact, these MOVs are in your little surge suppressors and your power strips at home. So it's just a fast acting switch. And so this is not engineering terminology. It's maybe just a way to help you uh, understand. It's a kind of a variable resistor, if you will. All right, this thing, oh man, I should probably shouldn't even put this in here. But the idea is that there's a, a place where... If you have just enough voltage, it'll just start to conduct a little bit right in here. And as the voltage gets higher, um, this thing will turn on and conduct a lot of current. So it, there's this place in here where it'll start to conduct. And really one problem sometimes happens is uh, these MOVs will be sized at too low of a voltage and then they're routinely getting into this area and heating up and then they can be damaged. But you don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, classes. A class has to do with how much energy they can take. So a station class uh, arrestor is a beefier arrestor than an intermediate class or a distribution class. So they're beefier. They might have the same voltage. They might turn on at the same voltage or the same MCOV, maximum continuous operating voltage. But uh, the station class can handle more current for longer without uh, imploding. So it's a, it's how much energy they can handle. So MCOV is, it means uh, maximum continuing operated operating voltage. So that's the voltage that you can apply to these all the time and they don't conduct and they should last a good long time. Um, uh, MOV is metal oxide varistor. Don't get those two turned around. So essentially if you, if you put in too small of an arrestor they're going to heat up and and die. On a 6 kV system, a 5 kV system, 4160, that'd be 2400 phase to ground. So you might use a 3 kV arrestor phase to ground in a solid grounded system. That same system, if it's resistive grounded or line to line grounded, you're going to use the full line voltage. You'd use a 6 kV. All right, I'll try to clear that up. Um, 
you can always use a little bigger one that's probably a better deal so here's a chart that kind of shows you that oh man this is a busy chart sorry guys it's pretty busy but if you take uh, say a 5 kV system uh, and they're lumping that in with this 6 kV MOV for impedance grounded or resistive grounded and for solidly grounded it's 3k right so any of these right in here they're saying use 3 kV for solid grounded 6 kV for uh, resistive grounded or ungrounded so it's just the line voltage um, plus a margin for in this case and it's the phase voltage in this case over here plus a margin now this chart don't worry too much about this but this just gives you an idea that if say a 9 kV arrestor it has a maximum continuing operating voltage of 7.65 so you should put it on a system that you should sub normally subject it to less than that that voltage above that it starts to um, conduct and this gives you an idea if you conduct a lot of current based on the size of the impulse because we don't know how big these impulses are here's the kind of voltage that's going to develop across the arrestor so you have this big voltage um, developing it's not as if this switch really grounds it and there's no voltage subject you know no voltage across the transformer or the motor or the wire that you're trying to protect there is voltage but it'll be less than the BIL okay lead lengths matter and how you put in the leads so keep them short and keep them straight it adds voltage maybe as high as 5 kV per foot when you start messing around with the lead